All right, in unit four, if you've taken a look at the blackboard shell, we're also throwing chapter five into the mix. And I, I don't mean to overwhelm you, but the next few chapters following chapter four discuss programming topics that you should already be familiar with, at least in principle. And that is basically decision structures, looping, and what's the other one? Arrays and array structures, I believe is what comes next. Of course, I could just verify that. Yep, decisions, looping, characters and strings, and then arrays, okay. So those are all things that you should already kind of know about, right? So if I talk to you about an if statement, it should not be brand new. This book kind of treats it as if it's kind of in that category. And if you remember from uh, your beginning programming classes, and I'm hoping that you can you know, bookmark this somewhere in your brain, that the classical notion of computer programming is that you can solve any logical problem using three structures. Yep. First one is sequence. That you just do it step by step. The second one is decision. So you select whether you go one way or another. And the third is looping. Because you have to repeat a process over and over again with you know, a combination of like the true-false statement that goes with it. So those st three structures should be able to solve any programming problem. All right. Now, one of the things that I'm, I hope that you guys have been picking up from some of the recent uh, videos and lectures and stuff is that the process of solving a programming problem is the process of solving a problem first and foremost. In fact, a lot of what you do as a coder is trying to figure out how to solve the problem and then the coding, once the problem is solved, is, is much easier. In fact, if you do your problem solving correctly, your code's almost written for you. All right, so you guys remember this term? Pseudocode, right? It, seems so foreign. it is kind of foreign. <laughs> and it's not pseudo code, it's pseudocode. All right. Um, so pseudocode is just basically, you guys should know this, putting it into kind of plain English steps like what you should do. Did you, how many of you have kids? That's the number of you do, right? Did you ever uh, give your kids instructions on how to do something? Like you give them a chore, but you give them like a list of how to proceed. Do you guys ever do that? You know, here's the lawnmower, good luck. <laughs> no, you, it's not exactly how it works, right? First you fill up the gas, then you make sure the spark plug wire is attached. And then you have to push the primer seven times or three times. And then you put your foot on the deck for safety. And then you pull the rip cord. It might take a few pulls, right? So there's all these like procedures and you do it without thinking, but there is a, like a step by step process to it. Um, the other thing that we do, and I was working on this with my young high school students today, which was pretty fun, is trying to figure out uh, how to solve a problem using a flow chart. And a lot of people prefer that because it's visual. So if you're not good with a list of what to do, sometimes, you know, the flow chart approach. A really good example of that is, you ever, like, pick up a box and look at a recipe? Like you buy a product and it says, step one, you know, preheat oven to 350, step two, right? And it'll be numbered. But then you'll pick up something like the mac and cheese box, and it will have things numbered, but it also has little pictures, right? Ooh. It has, like, a picture of, like, two tablespoons of butter. <laughs> right. I mean, it sounds silly, but some people just, it, it grabs better that way. So whatever kind of approach you're in, you should have some method for solving the problem. Some people can just go right to the code, no problem. Some people need to sketch it out. More comp the more complex the problem is, the more you're gonna have to pseudocode and flowchart. All right. 
I have. Well, uh, one of the problems that I'm going to sign you from this chapter, and by the way, I was just asked if I would use either of those. And <laughs> the answer is really it depends, you know, which is my favorite answer. If it's a, like most of the homework that you guys have been assigned, I, I really wouldn't need to because it's pretty straight ahead stuff. But the assignment I'm going to give you here in this chapter, which is do one of the game exercises, which is rock, paper, scissors. And if you had the good fortune of having me in Intro to Programming and were smart enough to save your code, um, you already have the logic all laid out for you. Because what would seem like fairly straight ahead logic isn't necessarily so. And my example, of course, is I can describe it to you in just a couple of minutes how to play it, but if you break down every little possible nuance of all the steps, it's not really quite as straight ahead as it might seem. Right? And then, you know, if you want to think of more complex scenarios, you can think of a game of chess and think of the scenarios there. Wow. Right? All right. So what they're talking about here, and I should go back, the three problem-solving approaches are sequence, right? Step one, step two, et cetera. You boil the water, you know, drain the noodles, put in the cheese sauce, add some butter, stir, serve, right? Mac and cheese. All right. All right, then there's the decision structure, which is what this chapter is about, and that is making choices to take one path or the other. Box of mac and cheese. Read the recipe. Southwest style of mac and cheese with chicken added or regular mac and cheese. <laughs> Not a great example. But you get to a point where you have some sort of a statement that you test for true and false. And Java, like all other languages, test the decision statement using Boolean values. So you write a statement. We check whether or not it's true. We check whether or not it's true using uh, logical operators as opposed to mathematical operators, although math might be part of it. And that Boolean is a word you should never forget. All right. Simple if statement. Notice the distinct difference between an equal and an equal equal. And the equal does, the equal equal does what? Right. It tests to see if they are the same. Yeah, if, if we were working with a variable named quiz score in regular code and we just had an equal, we just changed its value to 10. Why? Well, that, that's exactly what we just explained. If, if I took this statement... No, no, I mean like in Google Bay. No, you don't, to make that distinct difference. So Java must have hard-coded in it somewhere that if you use an equal sign, it's assigning a value, and that's all it does. Yeah, VB, VB is written to be kind of a, a beginning-level programming language. And with, and the reality is, is a lot of the stuff that sits in those control panels, like when you turn on or turn off option strict or turn it on, right. right? And then all of a sudden you have to be converting all your values. So some of it is like built into the engine that it kind of takes care of it for you. Uh, Java does not work that way. You have to say it exactly the correct way. All right. So here's the if statement. Here's the flow chart. All right. You can see it's not it's not a strange syntax. You should be familiar with it. Uh, no, you're thinking of Visual Basic. Java Java is in most languages do not have an end if. And that was the, the yeah. The statement's over when. It gets closed by the curly bracket, basically. Right. Well, this 
This is a simplistic example. It'll, it'll build up and you'll see the difference, Chris. All right. Here they're saying, yeah, this is one of those don't do it. Uh, don't, put a, don't put a semicolon here. If statements in this language um, will be phrased in a specific way depending on the extent to which they have content. Right. Um, and it was just stated here in class that if it's only got one thing to do, this doesn't need to be there. It wouldn't need to be there either way, but it just goes ahead and executes the statement. Do you have to have an else on an if? No. 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 If you don't have an else, what is the else? Do nothing. Do nothing. You just keep going. Okay. Well, that first semicolon, basically this is, don't have a semicolon there. That's why I'm covering it up. It should be in this form. If it is there, it won't print. It's just yeah, this, this is a correct format. The, the other one would not work. You can put the brackets in even if you just do one thing wrong. Yeah, and, and actually, and, and what uh, Kevin is saying is you can put the brackets in even if you're only doing one thing. But this allows you to not put them in because you're only doing one thing. But my habit is I put them in anyhow. That's just me. Well, apparently it's not just me, but that's how I proceed. All right. All right. So here's, Wayne, here's a good example of the equal, equal, and the equal. So now the question is, what is this equivalent to following this statement? Yeah, it would be a Boolean. It's either true or it's not true. So they're taking the, the, the true or fa false value you put it in here, and then you come down and you can just test that value. So you see, you can pass in a Boolean if it exists beforehand, and you don't have to write out a, a statement where you do a comparison. Everybody clear with that? You might not do it that way. I'm just telling you that if you have a pre-existing Boolean value, you can just pump it right in. That's, that's all that means. All right, we're going to keep going here. Uh, let's take a look now at the if-else structure. You guys should know this already. So when you come to your decision point and you go one direction, if it's true, you go a different direction if it's false. The false direction where you do something, given that false, is the else. If there was no else, there would be nothing on the false branch. You would just bypass and keep moving. All right. All right. I'm going to do this very first one here, the first you do it, kind of walk you guys through. 